Wow. My arm's sore from so many notes. <laughs> That's so, so good. We, there's a lot here. Uh, so Tay, let's have a conversation about the inner winner and how we can apply what Dennis just shared with us into our lives, into our business, into our coaching, in the context of it works global and everything else that we're setting out to achieve. Yeah, I just, and I was like, man, I feel like I just got, you said he's what, 87? I feel like he just gave us so many, like every other sentence that he spoke, there was like so many gold nuggets within that. I basically had my head down taking notes the whole time. Just so much good uh, that he was just sharing about. And we can literally talk about just about anything and uh, just really how we can apply it to our life and especially not just our lives, but our business. And it kind of gives you, shows you a reflection of like how you think about yourself and the conversations that you have with yourself, uh, you can literally see it within the results of what you're doing for your business. So uh, one of the first things that he said, and I think it just stuck out to me because the times that we're in right now. And he said, it's one thing to shout and another to be an example. And he said, the world is full of critics. We need more people of faith, more people, uh, more uh, role models, more people who are uh, willing to motivate people. And I think that's uh, so important because like you said, like, like uh, we're, um, by nature, we're negative. Uh, so when you say, like he said, news sales, because news shows you all the negative thing that's happening. And I think that's one thing with social media, like it's so easy to get caught up in that cycle of just getting on strobing. You're seeing uh, one negative thing after another. So for me, I think you have to be like Ted. I always say you have to be a light post. And a light post just shows people uh, that here's, here's a safety place. And I think we have to be that with our social media. We have to continue to put out uh, solutions. We have to continue to be uh, good examples, put out uh, things of faith and not things of doubt and things that's going to divide people. So I think you have to use your platform uh, in that type of manner and just understanding like there's there's always a need and we have to be the people to meet those needs. We have to, like you say, don't be the part of the problem. You have to bring solutions to the table. And I think that's what I love about it works, not just with the products, but just with uh, situations with uh, just any type of freedom, you know, that we talk about. It, it provides a solution uh, to helping you get that. So uh, just so much good there. And uh, another thing that he talked about, he was talking about the things that uh, most people are driven by. Uh, he talked about money. He talked about uh, status. Uh, he talked about just being competitive. Uh, and then he talked about uh, the last thing that I thought was so important. He said you should be uh, driven by, he said most of us are driven by our why. And I think that's why with this business, it's so important that when you, before you sign somebody, you have that conversation to like, what is your why? Because you know when they come in and if, in the beginning, like everybody else, like we're going to have that moment where uh, people are going to tell us no. Uh, people are going to tell you, you you're crazy for joining this thing. People are going to tell you what everybody's doing and you're going to have uh, that doubt or you're going to want to you, you're going to want to quit in that moment, people who first begin. So it's important to know what that person why is. So when that moment do happen, you can remind them and you can equip them of their why because they're going to be driven by that. They're going to be able to drown out the doubt and the conversations that people are having it and replace it to that thing that, that forced them, uh, caused them to sign up in the first place. So you have to always just keep your why in front of you. Uh, if you got a dream board, have your dream board uh, for me. Uh, I got my dream board and I put it, uh, I get, I made it like a thing on my screensaver. So anytime I'm having a bad time, all I gotta do is click my phone. I can look at the reason why I should, I should be thankful. I should be grateful. And I should remember the things that I wanted. And I said that I wanted a long time ago. So I thought that was uh, super important. Uh, and I know that he said, we do what we learn. And I think that's important with this business for just the training, for the personal development, for showing up to the family call, for showing up to uh, your team Zooms. Because those are the things that, people are gonna get on and they're gonna share what's working right now. Because if you're still trying to do things that was working two years ago or maybe three months ago, you're gonna figure out like those things aren't working anymore because people are getting innovative and people are figuring out new ways to reach people. So I think you have to continue to show up to get training from people who are having success. And as you can see with this business, like our entire company is winning. People are having massive success right now. So people are doing things right and they're sharing it. That's what I love about it. Works. People don't just hold what they're what they're having, how they're having success. Hold it hostage to only them. They get on platforms and they share exactly what they're doing, and they give it to you as a tool. So you have to continue to show up, and you have to continue to learn these new things. Get out of that pattern. I'm always figuring you have to stay in this one lane and do something a certain type of way and start trying new things. If what you're doing right now isn't working, so you have to continue to show up to get that information.
information to learn how to do these things and these tools and continue to learn in that uh, way. And uh, probably one of my favorites, I keep saying these are my favorites, but he said a lot of good stuff. But one of my favorites is the conversation that you're having with yourself. I think that is like so key for me because I was I was that person. How you, I used to always look at the reasons why I couldn't do something. I can know, especially in football, just thinking back then, like my mindset was just so off because I knew I did everything right off the field to get to the game day and feel like at some point in this game, I'm going to screw up. At some point in this game, I'm going to be the reason my team don't win. I think that carried over once I got out of football and started getting into like living in just a personal development where I started realizing it wasn't – uh, necessarily the people or the coaches or the teams or the things that were holding me back. It was myself. It was the thing that I was speaking out. I wasn't focused on the result that I wanted. I was focused on the problem that I knew was going to come. And by uh, default, I start moving toward the problems. So I think we have to, with our, just our daily lives, like we have to like start speaking to ourselves in ways that going to move us toward the, the uh, desired goal that we want. Uh, what I love about my wife is she's uh, listened to Dennis Waitley before. And she's like, this is embedded in her mind because I can just listen to conversations that she having and she have conversation with our leaders and they talk about how, you know, uh, this isn't happening or this isn't going on or my team right now or all these negative things. And she stopped them in their tracks and she said, don't say that because that's what your team is going to continue to be. You have to speak out what you want, even though you don't see it right now, you still have to speak those things out. And she goes back to like when she was a Ruby, had no idea what she was doing in this company. And all she could say, like, I love my diamond team. I love that I'm going to make so much more than doing these things. I love that I'm going to have the time freedom to do all of these things. She didn't have that yet. But she had the mindset. She knew the result that she wanted. And that spoke louder to her than the negative things that people were saying. So I think you have to be the loudest voice in your head. If you let other people be the loudest voice in your head, you have to understand that that expectation and your standards is always going to be lowered from what you want. It's always going to be lowered from what you want in your dream board. And your belief is not going to be there. So you have to be the loudest voice in your head. You have to understand the things that you put on your dream board, your friends, your families, your coworkers, they aren't going to make those things happen. They aren't going to move you closer to those things you are and it's going to start with the conversation that you tell yourself every single day uh me for example i just like me personally i've been telling myself for the last probably uh month and a half i should work out today i should work out today i should work out today you know what i haven't done i haven't worked out and it made me switch. He said, you have to think about what you're saying for yourself. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to say I should work out because I think about all the things that I should have done in the past that I didn't do because I should have did it. But since I know, like, every time you say you should do something, you aren't going to do it. You aren't going to hold yourself accountable to doing that thing. No, I am going to work out today. I'm going to set that standard. He said, when your mind thinks, your body acts and it responds. So I have to tell my body to, you are going to work out today. There's no way out. You're not going to make an excuse like you did in the past. So me personally taking inventory, like what I'm speaking to myself, I have to top tell, stop, stop telling myself what I should do. I shouldn't send 100 messages a day. I'm going to send 100 messages a day. I shouldn't do 10 host posts a day. I'm going to do 10 host posts a day. So I think you have to take inventory to how you're speaking to yourself. And that's one way for me. I know every time I say should, I don't do that thing. But when I say I'm going to do it, then I'm going to do it. So that's me taking inventory of myself and knowing going forward, like the words and the, and the triggers for myself that I have to change personally. And I think the last thing uh, that I'll, I'll share with you guys, and he talked about uh, accept value when it's paid and I always pay it for it. And I, I struggle with that. When people compliment me, I always kind of defer or push, push it to the side or it's kind of hard for me to accept things. So that's one thing that he said, when you accept it, it's you saying thank you and then you pay it forward. And so I got to get in that space where I accept the compliments. I understand like people have saw my growth and they compliment, complimented me on it, but I'm always, like you said, my biggest critic. You know, I've come a long way, but I'm still not where I want to be. Like, no, I have to stop and appreciate how far I've come. You don't have to look back and look at all the things that you struggle with, struggle with, but you can celebrate where you are today and the person that you're becoming, and you can continue to pay it forward by getting on these Zooms, sharing the information, sharing everything that you learned, but also showing people that, you know, you can celebrate how far you've come. You can do these things. So uh, that's what I had today. And uh, and just the last thing I'll share, and this is it, Jay. He said, talk about your the, the, the Talk about your desired result and not what you don't want. And I think that just goes back to me. Like, you have to think about what do you want this business to do for you? Then you have to think about that. And you have to put that at the top of the list. If anything don't line up with that thing, that result, then you have to, like, literally remove it from your life. 
Like you have to remove all distractions. You have to remove all excuses. You have to remove all the people who've called, who's causing you to lose track of that thing. So you have to think about the result and what you want this business to do for you. And you have to do all the things that it takes to do for you to get that result. You have to remove all doubt uh, and all uncertainty from the situation. And you have to be so laser focused on that thing that everything that you do is gonna move you closer toward it. And you have to take those steps every single day. You have to tell yourself that every single day. Uh, you have to put it like uh, we start the new year. Everybody wants to lose a certain amount of weight. Everybody wants to do this in the gym, but come time by January 31st, nobody is doing those things because they've stopped talking about it. They've let the people come in and tell them that you, you aren't seeing the results. Of course, you aren't gonna see the results in 29 days. You have to show up month after month, day after day. You have to continue to do those things. Same thing with this business. You have to continue to show up. You have to continue to send out the message, do the host post, show up to the team Zooms, continue to do everything that's necessary necessary to reach that thing. So uh, just so much good today. And I'm like, man, just that one little, little switch that I had to make. Stop telling yourself what you should do and tell yourself what you're going to do. You have to be able to give yourself a, a command and follow that command. And I think that's one thing that I personally got from it and one thing that I'm going to switch uh, in my, my mindset and the conversation that I'm having myself. So, uh, Chad, you was right when you said this is one that's like, it's like a gold mine. So just thank you for sharing this, Amanda. Just thank you for your willingness to just always be in this space of growing yourself and always giving back to others. And I, that's, I think that's what I love about you because you hold nothing hostage. You hold nothing to yourself. If you think it's going to better other people, then you put it out there to share. So, uh, I just want to say thank you for that, man, because I think that greatly helped me, especially uh, when it comes to me to actually getting in and working out today. So thank you for that, man. Oh, definitely. And thanks for sharing. I got a ton of good notes from what you just shared. And, you know, I, I want to start here with everyone just to kind of, you know, the inner winner is such a I love I love that the idea of that, because it really is an inside job. That's where it starts. You know, when uh, uh, it occurred to me one day when I was watching the Olympics last time that no person ever in history has been surprised ever that they won a gold medal. They won that gold medal over and over and over in their mind. They saw it. They saw it happening for a long time before they actually saw it happen in, in reality. Right. And what's so exciting is that we have, we have that same ability as humans because we're always like, like Dennis was saying, we're always moving towards our dominating thought. So if our dominating thought is that this is going to happen, then eventually this is going to happen. And what's so powerful and terrifying about that idea is that it could be good or bad, right? You could say, oh, I'm so scared that I'm going to have something horrible happen to me. And then sure enough, eventually something horrible happens. On the other end, you could be, you could say, I am going to do this. I am going to go diamond. And, you know, one thing I'll talk about is we do these green dream boards and it, it clicked for me today that it's, it's, it's for one main reason, the graphic and the emotions, because we are emotional creatures. And when we can harness our emotions for good, because our own emotions can take us out of the game or they can take us to the top of the mountain. And I'll share, I'll share a quick story and I'll give you guys just an example of how much, how strong I believe in this and how strong I believe in you is, you know, I was in the military and uh, I'll never forget. I was 7,300 miles from home in an airport in Afghanistan. And I got on Facebook. That was one of the few places they actually had Wi-Fi. I got on Facebook and my wife had made a post and this is the picture in the post. You see my son, last I knew he had had croup, right? And he was, he was just, he was two years old. It's funny because the day I left for deployment was like the day he started walking, of course. You know, I got a video like I'm literally like hours from leaving home. And I'm like, oh, wow, you're going to walk now right after I walk out the door, you know. So and he was failure to thrive. We knew he had issues because he just started walking after he was two. Right. And so he had croup. He never had croup before. He's on breathing treatments. I'm like, OK, the doctors have this handled. Well, that particular day and this is like December 20 something of 2012. OK. And I find out on Facebook that my wife literally had went and checked on him, thank God, at like 11 o'clock at night. You know, he'd been in bed for hours and he had had internal hemorrhaging. And when she opened his diaper up, it just blood just poured out. She said he looked like he was lifeless. So much blood had come out that he, she's like, oh, my gosh, is he even alive? Called 911. She's in the in the ambulance. They're giving him transfusions rush them to the hospital. They're nervous about giving them, uh, you know, surgery because of being on breathing treatments and crew, putting them under, 
you know, it just makes it tougher. And he's just a little guy. He's already got health issues and stuff. Right. So I'm sitting in Afghanistan and I find out about this. And all I want to do, like any dad, is I want to go home and hold. I mean, my, my wife, we we're I was in the military, so we're in a new area. She didn't even know the neighbors. She went and knocked on the neighbor's door and said, will you watch my other two kids at like midnight because the ambulance is there and she's and she can only go with the ambulance. So we have to do something with our other two kids. So she's like, please, someone help me. And here I am. That's my job. And I'm 7,300 miles away. So all I want to do is go home. And, and then I actually had to fly the wrong direction to turn in my weapon and fill out paperwork. And, and, and so, you know, he's fine now. He's nine years old. He's strong. He's be strong as an oak. You know, we've had, we've had preachers prophesy that he'll grow up to be strong as an oak. And he is, he wants to be a ninja warrior and he is strong. He's doing pushups every day and he's, he's in, climbs up the wall. You know, it's just, it's so cool now, but at the time, and I, I still have that picture in there every day. And I'll tell you why is because anytime I think about going the other direction, going back to that place where I didn't have freedom, right? Where the army owned me and the army said, you have to be 7,300 miles from home and you can't go home right now, even though your family's having an emergency. And I said, I don't ever want to feel this way ever, ever. I had my never again moment, never again will I be in this, this position where I can't take care of my family. And so anytime I don't feel like, you know, doing the things that's necessary to have the income necessary to have the freedom that we decided to have all I need to do is look at this picture and I have everything I need so here's what I'll tell you and here's what I know about you if you left your house today and you came home and there was a note there and it said little Johnny you know little Susie whatever your kids names are uh, we've got them and the only way you're ever going to see them again is if you promote three times in July you know, say you're a Ruby right now. So you have to be go double diamond in July or you'll never see him again. I would bet on every single one of you listening to me right now. I have no doubt whatsoever that if you love your children, now I'm assuming you do, or if they took your spouse and you love your spouse, or they took your mama, whoever, fill in the blank with who you love the most. If they took them away and you came home to that, of course, of course you would promote from Ruby to double diamond of every single one of you. Why? Because your why would be strong enough. You would get up early. You would stay up late. You wouldn't care at all who told you no. You'd get more no's in a day than you've gotten the last month. Every single day. You know, we have a girl on our team. She, her why has grown so big. It's grown so big that she signed 110 loyal customers last month. It's grown so big that she's signed 20 customers already this month. It's so big that she's had months where she's done steps to success 10 times. And when I first met her, her why wasn't that big. And when I first met her, she couldn't do steps to success. So what changed? Well, her emotions, she learned how to harness her emotions to move them into action. And she had a why that she is so strong that her why makes her cry. She took dream boards seriously. She sat down with her husband and said, here's what we're going to do, right? So in the context of that, I want to go over it just to bring back to the surface a couple things that, that Dennis said. Um, first of all, rather be an inner winner than an outer shouter. So much of this work gets done on the inside. We cannot give away what we don't have. See, this is a business of building family, encouraging, giving. We, get, we have to give so much because we bring people in that they want to be accepted. They want to be loved. They want to, to someone to come along and make a difference in their life and someone to tell them they're a winner. But if you don't believe you're a winner, how can you believe someone else is a winner? See, we can't give out what we don't have ourselves. We have to have it ourselves. And the, the, the thing is, is we have it in inside us, but we have to believe that it's inside us. We have to be convinced. We have to change our stinking thinking to where we see it, right? We see it and we believe it. Um, the champion and the Olympian within, you know, I love that. He said, where, where was it? He said, uh, oh, it's, it's here somewhere. I love the way that he put it because he said, you're, you're, you're just as good as the rest, but not any better than anyone else. Right. Something to that effect. And I love that because we are, see, we have to, we have to have that place of humble confidence. Right. And what humble confidence says is no one is better than me. 
in a good way, because I know I can do anything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But at the same time, I'm no better than anyone else. That's, that's the proper perspective that we all need to have. Tay talked about the inner force, the motivations, you know, whether it's money or having people like us or status with experts or, or competitiveness, um, you know, and, and how that doesn't work with people. Why competitiveness is great in the free market system where we have goods and services because we want to keep it in, in you know, competition so that people don't charge us some obscene amount of money. But with people, it's that you we don't want to lord over or power over people or have a big ego over people. That's why I love one team, one mission that it works really, really promotes, you know, that we're better together, that all boats rise, because what it teaches us all to do is not compete with the person on the left or the person on the right, but look in the mirror, compete with ourselves and break our own records and become the best version of ourselves and celebrate everyone else as they achieve and as they grow too, right? And I get it. Sometimes you go, wow, I've, I, my goal was diamond two and 300 other people made diamond last month and I didn't. And it's easy to go a little bit like, What's wrong with me, right? Well, you're on your own trajectory. You're on your own journey. I mean, I was in four different companies before it works and I never got past like the diamond level, you know, with a couple thousand dollars a month was the best I could ever do in any of those other companies. But it was the training, the training, the decades of training that culminated with working with my wife, this go around that took us, you know, to ambassador in just a couple of years. So, um, Yo, there it is. You're as good as the best, but no better than the rest. So don't compare, share. I love that. I love that. Um, the positive explanatory style, how to speak to yourself about you and other people, always, always, always in a positive context, right? And this is a, this, this has to be very intentional. I mean, here's what I'll tell you is if, if you looked outside of your front door today and you saw that the neighborhood came and dumped all their trash in your yard, you'd get, you, you wouldn't be happy about that. You'd say, Hey, don't do that anymore. Right. But when we turn on, we have to be, we have to be aware that when we turn on social media and we turn on the television, what we're basically saying is bring your trash and dump it straight into my brain. Right. And I'm not saying don't stay aware I'm not saying, you know, to just put, stick your head in the sand and say, I don't want to know what's going on in the world. It's all negative. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a difference between being aware and being consumed. Because if we, I was telling my son, because, you know, my son likes to get online and stuff and he gets in these chats. And I'm like, buddy, you can't be in these, you can't be in this environments with all this toxicity because it wears off on you. You can't, you can't walk into a smoky bar and not walk out smelling like smoke. You just can't. It's impossible. So when we put ourselves in these toxic environments, of course, it's going to get off. It's going to affect us, whether we know it right then in that moment or not, the, the toxicity, it's going to soak, right? If we soak ourselves in it, it gets on us, it gets in us. And so we have to be aware of that. And so my recommendation is if you're going to uh, get caught up on current events, be limited with it, tune in and then unplug, right? Limited doses. So you don't get too much. Um, that graphic and emotions, it's it just, it's so clicked with me with dream boards because what do dream boards do? First of all, they get people thinking about things they're normally not thinking about. The average person spends more time planning their two week vacation than they do planning their life. It's just the truth. I run into people all the day. You know, I run into people all the day. <laughs> I run into people all the time. And I say, you know, what's your life going to look like in five years? And they have no clue. They're like, I don't, I just, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow, let alone five years. So when you get someone to sit down, and they, they have this poster board and it's blank. They go, uh, I have to put something on here. <laughs> what is it? And maybe for a lot of people, it's like, I have no clue. So they get some magazines, start flipping through and they go, oh, wow, that place looks beautiful. I think I want to go there. And they cut it out and they stick it on the dream board. And there you go. A dream is born. I want to go visit Sydney, Australia, right? Because it looks so cool. And so the idea is planted. And, and you, you come up with whatever it is for you. I remember the day that I decided uh, the idea in my head, I wanted to write a book. I'm like, ah, I've never written a book. I'm not an author. I'm not a writer. Like I have no clue what to do, but it's the seed, right? It's the seed. And when you see a gift in someone else, plant that seed in them and say, you know what? There's something, I've, I've talked to hundreds and thousands of people, but when I talk to you, like Tay, when I talk to Tay, Tay, Tay is just as good as any preacher I've ever seen. 
I know I could I could picture Tay right now speaking in front of a congregation with tens of thousands of people and lives being transformed with just 30 minutes of his time speaking to those people. And it's a unique and rare gift that's given by God that everyone doesn't have. And so when you see these things in people, don't keep it to yourself. Let them have it. If it's positive and good, I promise they won't be mad at you. You know, they might say, oh, I don't see that. But OK, whatever. That's what I see. I, I think it's good. Don't be mad at me. You know, it's good. So are you your best friend or your worst critic? Are you counting your blessings or your blemishes? Woo. This is important. And it's, 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 I love Pam Souter would say, take a notebook and take the next 72 hours and, and write down all your thoughts throughout the day. So you can just take inventory. It's like, if you want to know where all your money's going, you got to just write it all down. You know, you take a week and go, man, I never knew I spent $82 a week on soda and energy drinks, or, you know, you find out these things, right? You're like, wow, I never knew that I spent this much money a month eating out. You have to take inventory of where your money's actually going because it, it gets deposited in your account and then it goes out of your account. It's like, where does it go? Well, it's the same thing with our thoughts. We have these thoughts all day long, but what are they? And are they serving our future? Or are they sabotaging our future? Because they're probably doing one or the other. Um, just a couple more here. I've, I'm all fired. Dennis Waitley got me all fired up. We're already three minutes over, Tay. I got to take my son and drive to Little Rock, Arkansas today to pick his buddy up for church camp here in a few days. But I got just a couple more. I love this, this, this change, this slight adjustment. And I want to... I can. I'm making it right. You know, Pam Souter, and she taught us this years ago. I love it. She's like, if you want to call and vent, I'll give you about 30 seconds. And so she, I think she's probably just kind of tuned. She's like, okay, they're in venting mode. I, it doesn't matter what they're saying. She's probably like texting, you know, while she's on the phone, you know, she's like, oh, la, 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 la. you know, and then like, are you done? Okay. You're 30 seconds up. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Let's get to the important part. What are you going to do about it? This is wrong. This is wrong. Your team's doing blah, 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 blah. Okay. What are you going to do about it? See, that's the key. Who cares that the world, the sky, everything's falling apart. What can you and I do about it? Right? That's the action piece. Because for the most part, you and I are where we are right now, whether we, whether we're excited about it or whether we got zero in our bank account, Electricity is about to get turned off tomorrow. Guess what? We have arrived here because of the decisions that we made. There's a day I had six warrants for my arrest. And when they came in and got me and my wife had to bail me out, I had to look in the mirror and go, I am here because of my stupidity, because of my bad choices. I could have chose door A, door B, and I chose, chose door B, wrong choice. A or B, D, B, wrong choice. But here's the exciting thing is when the day we take the power back, the day we take responsibility and say, if I got here because of my choices, imagine where I could go if I make new choices. And then a new idea is born that we can change and that we can go a whole, whole new direction. So a couple more. I think I probably said that last time, but a couple more. Um, life is short. And the older you get, the more you realize it, the more valuable as time starts to slip away, the more valuable we realize that it is, the more careful we are to not waste it. Right. There's only enough time to solve the problems. So don't be part of them. Better to be an example of what to do than what not to do. That's why I love the Bible. The Bible is full of stories of both sides. Right. Do this, do this, do this. Don't do this. Do this, do this, do this, don't do this, do this, do this, do this, don't do this. You know, it, it says, behold, look what happens when you do this with your life. But beware of what happens if you sell your soul for some money, right? And so we have all those things, affirmations he talked about. Tell people what they could do. Words, pictures, feelings, man, our emotions. And here's the thing about I, I, all the top leaders in this company are highly emotional but they you know they've learned how to harness their emotions for good because our emotions, they can take us to the top of the mountain or they can take us out. And you know what, in, in, in regards to emotions, we want to have our emotions in the car. You just don't want to have your emotions in the driver's seat. So we have to understand what they do to us 
And we have to harness them in a way to where it's benefiting us moving forward. Self-esteem, our worth, based how you feel on your potential value, which is a thousand times what you're doing now. Our value, you know, with our team recently, I did this thing where I took like a hundred dollar bill, you know, and I said, when this hundred dollar bill, the day it was created, what was it worth? And everyone said a hundred dollars. Well, then I said, well, what are you worth the day you're created? And I think you guys would all agree that there's no monetary value. You're all, you're all, you know, priceless, right? I think we would all say, well, we're priceless. Like you probably wouldn't uh, sell your, you probably wouldn't let me cut your arm off for like 10 grand. You'd probably say, no, my arms, you can't pay me enough for my arm. So you and I would agree that we're priceless. And the minute we're born, we're, we're blameless, we're, we're, we're pure, we're innocent, right? But when you take that $100 bill and you, you, know, you, you stick it in the toilet and take a crap on it and you rub it in some dirt and you spit on it and you, you, know, you, you, you just dump mud on it and put it in the sewer and stick it out in the porta potty and dunk it in a few times. Oh, oh, can you imagine that? So you could see how that $100 bill would be like, man, I don't feel like I used to. But what is it worth? It's still worth $100. See, no matter what's happened to you, I don't care if you were, if you might have been abused by your own parents, you might have been thrown away by your parents, you might have been, uh, you know, beat up by a spouse, you might have been betrayed by a closest friend. There's all these things that possibly happen to you. And I know uh, it can be really bad because I've, I've seen it in my own life with my own family. I, mean, I had a young brother that committed suicide and, you know, just, just every challenge you can imagine within my family. <laughs> So I, 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 I feel you. I know that there's some crazy stuff that can happen, but guess what? It doesn't matter because you're still worth the same you were as the day you were born. All this crap happened. It didn't change what you're worth, but see, I can't tell you that. You have to believe that. And until you believe that, you're going to be holding yourself back. It's those self-imposed limitations. So I'm going to stop there, Tay, for today. I mean, I'm, on, I'm, I'm just, I could go all day long and I'm just, this is what I love. And I hope something today that you guys heard turn the dial just a little bit. You know, it's almost like if we have this briefcase and there's the six numbers you need to unlock your future. So hopefully today was at least one of those numbers and you're that much closer to having it come wide open and everything happen. Because I'll tell you what, something about it works. It works is a vehicle that will lead you to every single freedom that you want. And probably a lot of freedoms you didn't even know you wanted until you're in it. And you go, oh my gosh, I never even knew this was possible that I could even live like this. So I hope something here, make sure to drop in the comments, let us know, uh, you know, what spoke to you, what stuck out the most to you. And I hope you all have an awesome day. We'll be back Thursday going over number two. I think number one was great. Don't you, Tay? Should we just keep going through all five? Yeah. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> so good. Yeah. And that was from Facebook. I mean, if you guys want to go back and, um, uh, if you want to go ahead and, and share with your teams or whatever, this one we're just pulling straight off. I think it's called Winning Winning with Waitley. It's, there's a, a Facebook page for it. Let me see here. I'm going to type it in. Put this in here real quick and just so I can tell you guys, for those of you that are still on here. Yeah, Winning for Life. Winning for Life with Dennis Waitley. It's a Facebook page and you can go in there and there's there's sheets and stuff like connected to this. So I'll, I'll get that sheet downloaded and upload it to this group. But we are always searching to the corners of the world to find value that we can bring to you guys. And so thanks for tuning in. I know we went a little late today, 10 minutes over. Please forgive me. Maybe next time we'll end 10 minutes early, but probably not. <laughs> so have a great day, everybody. Tay, thanks as always, man, for your commitment, for jumping on here. And uh, let's just go out and change some lives. See you guys. Thank you, Chad. <laughs>